What's going on you guys? Connor O'Reilly here at Team Latitude 64 and OTB Discs. And I'm here at GK Pro today at the beautiful Maple Hill Disc Golf Course. Super excited to be here. Ever since I started watching disc golf, this is a course I just dreamed of coming to. So really excited to bring you guys a course preview and talk about how I like to attack these holes. Pretty windy out here today, but luckily the rain stayed off. Starting off on hole one, we got a par four, 865 feet. We've got this water carry for about 440 to 450 feet that you gotta clear to get in bounds. The farther you get up there, the easier the upshot is into a guarded green that tucks right at the end. All right, a lot of headwind. I'm gonna take my OptoX Ballista Pro and just send it flat. Ooh, a little bit left, but that can work over there. All right, I thought the headwind would have a little more effect on my disc off the tee, so I played a pretty safe angle. I'm gonna blame the group in front of me for giving me some bad wind reads there. They were all shanking them into the water, but it's whatever. From here, I really am just gonna pitch up, try to take a par to get started on this tough par four. Four. Yeah, I'm just going to pitch up take an easy par there. With that out of bounds behind the basket, I could have gave this one a little stronger run, but nothing wrong with starting off on an easy par on hole one. One of the things I personally love about Maple Hill is every hole feels almost like a signature hole. Here we are in hole two. It's a par three, 390, 95 feet, effectively dead straight. We have a stand of trees on the left here that you're gonna wanna avoid moving to the right. And we have this rock wall with an out of bounds line on it on the right side. So you really wanna test those trees on the left, have it breaking right late, try to give yourself a putt, maybe up the hill to the basket. This, this tee box is a little short for comfort, so I kinda take a page out of James Conrad's book and start back here on the rock, give myself an extra step. Right. Nice and straight. I should have a circle's edge putt right there. Birdie look here on two. Make sure to give it the height. All right, hole two requires power off the tee and accuracy in the late end of your flight to get through the gap. Give yourself a putt up the hill. All right, deja vu, hole three. 395 again, another par three. This one though, you're gonna wanna move the disc to the right in the middle of your flight and then fade back at the end. Play, sli play slightly uphill, tough birdie to get, but if you can hit the shape right, you should have a solid putt. I'm gonna take my Gold X Explorer, try to get the wing turned down to the right a little bit. Let it fight back. Oh, that might be an ace run. Come on. Oh my gosh, that was so close, you guys. Wow. Chose my seven speed here. Didn't really want to give it too much of an ace run because you can skip down the hill. A lot of people will go distance driver here, but I'm just trying to stay accurate. Another tough par three to get. If you can give yourself a look on this basket, you're pretty happy. All right, I just wanted to take a second to thank the guys and girls over at OTB Discs for everything they do to support me as well as GK Pro. Right now we've got some custom merchandise with my CO logo up on the site. Got a new batch coming in to celebrate, 
celebrate the Delaware Disc Golf Challenge victory. So make sure you grab these while they last. All right, hole four, we're at our tightest gap on the course. 247 feet, but it plays probably 50 or 50 feet downhill or so, or so. So really, you only need about 150 feet worth of power here. You wanna get your nose driven down, hit this gap, and uh, as short as it is, this one, if you have a putt, you're actually really happy. I'm gonna elect for the forehand. Stay on the left side of the tee box over here, try to open up the gap. Do a little turn on this harp. Hit a tree, hit a house. I think I hit a tree. Got lucky, stayed in bounds. Got the nose up a little too high there, but fortunately caught my backboard. Missed the nose angle there, but luckily caught one of these backside trees for a pretty simple birdie look. On a tough course like Maple Hill, you wanna take advantage of a short hole like this and maybe give it an ace run or try to get yourself an easy birdie. One of the beautiful parts about Maple Hill is these couple ponds that come into play. This one in particular comes in on a few holes. Starting here on hole five is our first look at it. It's a par three at 300 feet, not super long. But the gap on the right here is kind of a sucker gap. So many trees there, really hard to get through for a putt look. So a lot of people are swinging it out, flying over the water. A lot of people are taking a shot that's gonna move high from the left down to the right. For me, that's gonna be a sidearm shot. Try to stick it close, maybe get an ace run here. I'm gonna take my burst pioneer, give it the height so that it can move back to the right. Little high, but that's gonna be safe. Oh, dropped down there, but uh, got a putt. I sorted a little high for the ace run there, but you got this big bushy pine tree here. Dropped me down on the basket, and that's uh, two holes in a row using that backboard for my advantage. I give myself birdie looks. And out here in Maple Hill, you'll take as many as you can get because there's bound to be danger at some point in your round, so you wanna have that cushion ready. All right, hole six, another par three here. This one's 410 feet. One of the harder holes on the course to get a birdie on. Tight gap off the tee. We've got this out of bounds rock wall on the whole way on the right side. A stand of trees right in front of the, the green there, centered up. And there's a tree line on the left side too that you have to beat. So really you gotta keep your disc pushing straight. A little bit of movement to the right can help. But uh, if you have a putt even from 45 feet on this hole, you're pretty happy. A little bit of late drift to the right, not quite enough, but uh, we'll take a scramble and try to get a, a party here. Not a party, a par. All right, this left side's a little jelly, but try to pop a forehand roller up there. That'll give me a putt. Gotta go to my straddle stance here. I don't like that tree in my, in my backswing. All right, there's hole six. Very demanding tee shot. If you don't get within 50 feet of the basket, it's gonna be a tough scramble. So you really wanna try to penetrate here. Give yourself something. All right, here on hole seven, we have another one of those deja vu distances. We got another 410 foot hole here, just like the last hole. This one plays a little bit different. Up the hill, we got probably about 15 feet of elevation gain. Effectively dead straight. It's gonna flatten up at the end. So you wanna be flying with something really neutral that can get to the ground pretty flat and not skip left at the end. But really, if you just get down there through the gauntlet of trees, you're gonna be happy. Taking my Opto Explorer here. Got some wind coming off the water, so a little hint of hyzer out of the hand. Ah, oh, 
Uh, drifted a little bit right there, but uh, gonna have an easy jump putt approach. All right, I got about 80 feet left. Normally I'd probably lay this one up, but since I'm here for you guys, let's give it a run. Nope, didn't commit to the didn't commit to the Anheuser angle there. But it's another tough par three, so tap in par is not bad here. All right, name of the game here on seven. Throw it really straight. Land your disc flat up here. Give yourself a putt from close because with drop offs and slopes on all sides of the basket, you want to be kind of close here. All right, here we are, hole eight. Another par three. This is kind of one of the iconic ones out here. Last year it was 65 feet shorter and it was really runnable. A lot of people were getting aces on this one. So they moved it back a bit. It's still aceable, but it's gonna take a more of a high level shot now. We've got a headwind coming at us off the water. You effectively just wanna go dead straight and you have a backstop. There's a wall there with an out of bounds line on it that you can kind of hit and play the slide back. So you want to commit to missing long here if you're going to miss. All right, pretty stiff headwind. I'm going to take my gold, gold line X Explorer, hit it flat, let the disc work for me. Wow, squeaked in bounds on the right side over there. That was the first time I really threw that disc in a stiff headwind, so now I know I need a hint of hyzer out of the hand, but uh, it's safe and I'm putting. All right, got my meter in here, circle's edge putt, look for a birdie. Little high left, but Chain said they wanted to catch me today. Hole eight always plays out as one of the most exciting holes out on the course. You can usually hear the crowd roaring all around, so it brings an excitement factor and a chance for the players to blow up the chains. Hole nine, last hole on the front nine. Very unique par four. Straight up the hill here, and then it's gonna dogleg directly 90 degrees to the right and go back down the hill across a little creek of water and, the, and that creek plays the front side of the green as well as wraps into a pond that plays the right side of the green. So there's a lot of water danger here as you approach the green. You wanna get your tee shot pretty far down that hill so you have kind of a jump putt approach. All right, I'm taking my Opto Keystone, something that I know is gonna hold turn even with a nose up angle that you have to achieve up this hill. Try to see how far down there I can get it. That one feels great out of my hand. Maybe long, but I'm not sure. I don't think it will be. I think that was a good diselection. Let's see. All right, my drive caught this middle stand of trees and kicked over, I believe. Leaving me with a trickier, longer upshot than I'd like. Just gonna play a stable shield off to the left side of the green. It's a longer putt than I'd like to take on that scary death putt basket, but you'll take a chance out here all day. Maple Hill is one of those courses you're bound to have a few putts around, staring at water behind your chains. Gotta make sure, take an extra second, calm the brain, really focus in. While hole nine is gonna be the shortest par four on the course, it doesn't play easy. If you don't get around that bend and down the hill, it's gonna be a longer approach than you'd like, and you're likely gonna to have to play the high left side of the green to have a safer, safer side. Chance at a par, maybe a long putt for birdie. All right, we're here on the start of the back nine, and I wanna give a quick second. Shout out to GK Pro Discs. They've got some merchandise like this 
supporting the OTB skin stuff that they do every single week that you guys love up on their website, GK Pro Disc. Also here in a couple weeks with OTB, they're gonna get a bunch of discs stamped with this stamp on it. That'll be up on the OP OTB Discs website. So make sure to keep an eye out for that as well. Hole 10, another, another iconic hole out here at Maple Hill, but if you say that on every hole, you're gonna sound like a broken record because they're all really pretty signature holes out here. A lot of people call this the castle hole. 375 feet straight up the hill. It's probably at least 50 feet above our heads up there. We've got a strong left to right crosswind that's gonna kind of smash the disc out of the air for a right hand and backhand shot. Gonna have to really give this one my full rip. Try to get a long putt. Maybe a short putt. We'll see how much I'm feeling it. I'm gonna take one of these first, these stock run rives. These things are flying nice and stable. You can really trust these on a big power shot. I'm gonna throw it right at that blue banner flag up there. Let it fade a little bit at the end. A little heavy on my hyzer angle there, but uh, it was a safe flight and it gives me a pretty easy chance at a par and a jumper at a birdie. On these uphill holes, I know I've said it before, but throw it farther than at least one of your card mates so that you can catch your breath before you have to putt. I'm gonna have to straddle off to the left here. Gives me the most room to work with. Wind's gonna beat it out of the air a little bit, so I'm gonna aim it right up there high in the chain. A lot of spin. Oh, barely cleared the wall there. Even the shorter chip ups here, you gotta be careful to get it over this little castle wall, because if you don't, pretty much everything that hits that wall with some speed is going bye bye down the hill. As long as this one plays, I'm not too mad at a par here. On Maple Hill, you really want to, want to avoid the bogeys. Pars are just fine. Give yourself chances at birdie, and you'll be happy with your round. All right, we're here on hole 11. It's a par four, kind of reminiscent of hole one. Down, drops away, you just don't have the pond here. You want to clear this group of taller Christmas trees here, land it somewhere in the middle, and then there's another stand of Christmas trees that you're going to want to try to weave it through up into this guarded basket that slopes up at the end. All right, got a bit of a headwind here. I'm gonna take this rive, put it out there nice and low on some hyzer, let it finish off to the left. I was pushing out a little straighter than I might like. But uh, if I'm not behind a big Christmas tree, I should have something up into the green. As I get up to my shot, I realize I'm maybe a little bit farther off to the right than I'd like to be. I've got these three pine trees to beat here and this one still. Whereas if I get up there on the left side, I can kind of pick or choose either side of the one pine tree. Something to note going into tomorrow's round. I got 320 feet with 13 feet of upslope. That's right there in a long mid-range range for me, so take my OptoX compass, give it a little turn, and hit it with a lot of spin. That last tree on the right side approaching the green, but that's a jumper from about 38. Thought I was gonna end up just outside the circle, but here we are, foot or two inside. Good look at a birdie.
I always try to make sure to do my routine on the green, and for me, that's two pump fakes, getting my mind in a good spot, making sure I take a good breath. Always want to be comfortable before you throw in the course. There's hole 11. All right, we're facing back-to-back -back par fours here. Hole 12 is a little bit shorter, but it's a pretty unique shape. We've got this Christmas tree farm coming in on our right side here. The slope is down from the right to the left. Down in the background, there's a gap that you want to get to on the right side of the fairway over here. The bigger arms are going to try to fly into that gap and give themselves a short, straight up shot. Because the shorter you are, the harder it is to bend the disc down to the basket for a look at a birdie. We've got some wind, tail off the right side. I'm going to take my rive and hit it really firm with some Anheuser, see if I can crest the hill down there. Not quite enough angle there. Hopefully I penetrate and stop somewhere though. Look like I hit a tree or maybe uh, the upslope there and I think I stayed in the secondary tunnel on the left side. I'm a little farther left than I'd ideally be, but I'm far enough right to where I'm looking down the tunnel. Go with the Anheuser harp shot, little forehand reach out. Relied a little too much on the stability there, but we'll take a jump putt. Didn't quite play that hole ideally, but gave myself a long look and you gotta make a couple circle twos to shoot a hot score out here at Maple Hill. All right, hole 13 is one of the longer par threes on the course, but it plays significantly downhill. A lot of players are gonna play for this straight gap. There's this big mature tree on the left side that you're gonna wanna move right of and try to land your disc flat down there. It does drop off behind the basket, but you really wanna commit down here and get get a look at the, that basket down there. So being long is not a bad thing. But for me, I've been cooped up in the woods out at Iron Hill last week. I'm throwing high hyzer, slamming it over the top of the trees, letting it filter through the backside. It's a little thinner back there once you get past the big pine tree on the right here. Key for me here is just to get it flat, throw it long and let it stall as it fades. A little high, hopefully it hits something quick. Drop down in the circle right there. Played some Plinko, we gotta look. Crash the tree canopy up there. Drop me down, just outside the circle. Got some drop off behind the basket, so make sure to catch some metal here on this putt. There we go, make sure to keep my eyes locked on the target and follow through on the release. See, on those misses, you're going bye-bye, so you're gonna wanna make this putt. I'd guess 13 will play as one of the harder twos on the course, but as a par three, it doesn't offer a ton of bogey danger unless you have some trouble up here on this sloped green. But if you can stick your putt, you should have a birdie or a par at worst. All right, here we are, the beautiful hole 14. I know all you at home have always dreamed of throwing this hole and it's uh, just as challenging as it is beautiful. 442 feet. You got water carry pretty much the entire way. It maybe stops 20 feet shy of the basket if you're going in a direct line. And this year they added a little wall there with some advertisement for good measure just to keep you from sliding inbounds if you, if you stick it too low. You really gotta give this one the height, give it the commitment. Bailing off to the left is a safe play, but uh, for y'all's sake, I'm going to try to go right at the pin today. A little windy today, so I'm going to bump out a distance driver. Make sure I commit. If I miss, long left isn't bad. I 
Yeah, that's gonna be way high. Hopefully high enough to hit the canopy. Oh, catches a tree. Circle's edge putt. We got a birdie look. It's gonna be a bit of a death putt though. All right, here we are. Another one of those putts with the water staring at you behind the chains. Make sure to do your routine. Just lock in on that link and commit. Made it nice and high to the bulk of the chains. Twice there, it's look. Hole 14 is as punishing as it is memorable. If you miss the inbounds, you proceed to a drop zone that's about 300 feet away. And then if you miss from there, there's a shorter drop zone, so you have progressing drop zones. They really made sure that if you're gonna miss this island and not play it safe to the left, you're gonna be punished and probably take a five at best unless you really earn that four. So make sure to get in bounds, give yourself a putt. If it's too far, lay it up, take a par, move on. All right, here we are on hole 15. It's another par three. This one's 323 feet, effectively dead straight. We've got a gap that starts out at its widest point here near the tee box and narrows down as we approach the basket, getting a little tighter. You really wanna throw something that's gonna flip up the flat on a right hand backhand shot or for a lefty. Push it straight, maybe finish a little bit to the right at the end. But it seems like tailing to the right at the end of your flight is more advantageous than to the left, a couple less trees. Either way, dead straight, commit to it. If you pipe this gap, it puts you on the basket, so not a bad chance for an ace. I'm gonna take my faith, stable putter that I've beat into straight. Hit it on a little hyzer pretty hard, give it the height, let it flip up. Flew in the exact line I wanted. Maybe landed on the ground a couple of feet shy of where I'd like, but I'll sacrifice a little distance here to make sure to keep my disc moving through the tunnel the whole way. All right, left myself just outside the circle here, but it was right in line. Bit of a right to left cross, so I'm gonna keep it low in the right side chains, just in case it gets lifted. Little bit of lift there. Hit it on an angle that would let that lift work towards my advantage. With as many tough birdies as there, as there are at Maple Hill and almost no must gets, this one's maybe about as close as you'll get out here. All right, here we are in hole 16, otherwise known as the Kevin Jones slip ace hole, near and dear to our hearts. Downhill the whole way, another tunnel that narrows as we get farther down the, down the fairway. 471 feet, it's gonna take a full rip out of, out of a fairway driver for most players. Some players might go distance driver, even some of the more powerful players could throw mid-range. Just a matter of what do you get to push straight on that downhill line. For me, it's gonna be an explorer. All right, taking my Opto Explorer here. Got a little bit of a wind coming off the left side of the fairway off that pond, so. Try to hit it firm and flat. Drifting right, that one's shaping up nicely. If it can miss that last tree. Oh, just catches the foliage there, but a long putt look at a birdie still got a chance though I'm just gonna have to put a lot of spin with my upper body on this putt yeah didn't love the footing not worth hurting myself but I'll give it another try cool all right easy par tap in here Hole 16 is a pretty challenging hole if you don't clear that middle gap up on the hillside there before it drops for the last bit of the fairway. 
But if you do clear there, you should be able to ship up for a pretty easy par. If you can get all the way through though, you might have a chance at a tough birdie. All right, hole 17 boasts our second of two changes to this year's course. Once again, just like hole eight, they moved our tee box back about 60 feet and a hair to the right. Last year, people could really get aggressive, throw a big turning shot, turning angle out of their hand for the right-handed backhanded players and really get up in that mouth. But now you're gonna have to push it out straight for the first half of the flight before you drift it down to the right, making this hole a little more challenging since we have this out of bounds line on the left the entire way. Taking my understable rive here, hit it with a little hyzer out of the hand, a lot of spin. Let it work up to the right at the end. Oh, a little lift in the mid flight, even though the wind is crossing to the, to the right there, but that's uh, gonna be a really good spot. All right, this one's got a bit of a downslope behind the basket, so you wanna kinda check your speed coming in here. If you can be in this area where you can see the basket, that's gonna be really advantageous for speed control here. Always helps for depth, percep depth perception if you can actually see the target you're throwing at. That should check up there nicely, probably inside the circle. All right, that was a tricky lie. Tried to give it a bid. Now I got a low ceiling uphill comeback to keep a clean card on this hot round. Not an easy look. I keep the nose up. Jam it in there, trust those chains. They'll do their job if you do yours. Hole 17 is gonna be a really drive-oriented par four. The higher you can get up on this hill and the farther to the right, the easier this approach into a bit of a treacherous green. All right, so far we're sitting on a pretty dreamy round, 11 down, no bogeys coming into hole 18. This one's known as a brutal finisher, can really cause some score separation. It's a par four at 652 feet. We've got this immediate rise right off the tee making you put the disc up in the air, causing your nose angle to go up, and that's what makes this tee shot the trickiest. Some players are gonna take a shot that they're gonna flex off to the left, back to the right. A lot of players are really just gonna to look to penetrate straight as far as they can. We do have an out of bounds line up there on the left, so you can't go too far and bail left and be safe. You really gotta control it, be nice and straight. The farther you are here, the easier it is to pro approach a peninsula, a little island green, surrounded by out of bounds on all sides. I'm gonna take my understable explorer, put it out there on hyzer. I know with the nose up, it's gonna make the disc act a little more stable. So I gotta take my understable one here to still get that straight flight. I love that angle. Off to the left a little bit. I'm gonna have maybe 330 to 350 into the green on a sidearm shot. And for you guys, we're gonna try to get up there. All right, we got 310 feet uphill the whole way. Got this wind pushing right to left. It's gonna knock my disc out of the air. Safe. All right, really scary approach here. Probably one in the tournament. I'm not gonna run unless I really have to. For me, it's so easy just to chip up and then maybe take a long putt for your birdie or an easy four. And this green can be pretty punishing if you miss it.
Thanks you guys for joining us out here at the beautiful Maple Hill Disc Golf Course. It's a dream to be able to show you guys how to play this course. It's an amazing property and it's going to shake up for an exciting weekend. Make sure you tune in to GK's post-production. Check out the Disc Golf Network for your live action. And make sure to like and subscribe to GK Pro and all they're doing to bring you entertainment.